Welcome to the Church Collective Podcast. In this episode, myself and Chris had the opportunity to talk to Brett Yonker from Passion. They talked about their album, Burn Bright. And for those of you that may just be joining the Church Collective journey, we've had the opportunity to talk with Brett before on the podcast. We've talked with Melody Malone. We've talked with uh, Louis Giglio. And I'm probably forgetting even others, Christian Stanfield. There's been so many great members of Passion on the podcast. So make sure to go back and listen to those to just get even more context. But we talked about uh, their latest album. We talked to Brett about worship leadership and and again, whether you're a worship leader or a songwriter or on the production team, I think you will be totally blessed by this episode. So here we go with the Church Collective Podcast. We just got done with Passion 2022 a couple weeks ago. And, and um, I actually, coming into this podcast, I was we had an all-team meeting with our, our whole staff. Um, you know, so that's everybody from Passion City Church to Six Steps Records to our publishing. And we have like a seminary. I mean, just like everybody right like the all skit kind of a thing and our conference team and and it was kind of the first time that we got to sit down and begin to process together as a team all that god has done and i think um we're just i'm personally even just coming out of the days of of this gathering and it really is crazy and miraculous over fifty thousand people 18 to 25 year olds and honestly a whole new wave of of college students, you know, um, even different than who were there maybe a couple of years ago in 2020. And, um, and I'm just really grateful. And, um, and so, I mean, the gathering, it's kind of hard to get my, my words around it. And um, I just know, I mean, I've, I've had the privilege, I've led worship for a long, long time. And, and I've been in many environments, um, you know, just great, I mean, you know, student camps and, and, and conferences and things like that. And I think coming out of, of where, where the world has been, where we've been to be in an atmosphere of faith like that um, was um, really encouraging for my soul and for my spirit. And I just, I'm really thankful. Man, what, um, so you, you guys didn't meet in the previous year, right? So this was like a, a return. We, we, you know, like all things, the, the last couple of years we pivoted and right. uh, you know, like the, the word, and um, we did an online gathering. So we had our two locations uh, here in Atlanta and I mean, it's still, I mean, that 2021, like, like it's miraculous in its own right. Um, through yeah. broadcasting, we were able to reach over 700,000 people wow. um, last year. So, you know, it's like, I mean, that's still pretty <laughs> so crazy. Not, not so much a pause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not so much. And um, even today, oh gosh, I wish I could remember the stats exactly, but it was like, they were like, who have streamed passion this year was from 180 nations. Wow. Like crazy i mean just crazy stuff um but yeah 2021 2020 i mean just to kind of 2020 we were gathered mercedes-benz you know the dawn of a new decade you know new year's eve you know (laughs) singing good grace joel houston saying happy new year it's like the coolest thing ever fireworks (laughs) i mean it was awesome and um really really powerful and then um, for us in the passion band, we went on tour for a couple months we were on winter jam and then with crowder and, and louie and then the world shut down and then so we just with the whole time you know we've been trying to uh, serve our city serve the people build into the people build the church figure out everything just like everybody else 2021 for the conference we um we did it virtual and then um coming back we just you know honestly crazy and six months ago uh there was a window of opportunity as the football schedules were kind of laid out and and our team prayed and felt like no we we need to get people together and and the fact that that happened that 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 all these students came within six i mean we only had six months to rally people and to cast Mm -hmm. the vision and and it was just it's a miracle it's a miracle did you have to like the closer you got and then all of a sudden at the same time omicron started started popping up like what was like what were the talks like were you thinking about canceling it or was there pressure to cancel it yeah yeah i mean you know um our our leaders have i i personally feel you know they've walked through uh this whole season with um just doing a really great job. And I think um, one of the things is if to look at the track record of, of passion in our church and how we've, we've handled it, we were definitely listening. We were listening to the science, we were listening to the doctors um, and, and also wanting to 
build into what we're doing. So we've done things where we've canceled things and we've done things where we haven't canceled things. We've done non, we've done virtual things and we've done in-person things. And, and we, as it was coming down, you know, as particularly, you know, as you think about, there were a football game played right before passion in that same room. There was a football game played right after passion in that same room. There was a, a lot of us, uh, not me personally, but there's a lot of Georgia Bulldogs around uh, our community. <laughs> you know? And so, you know, they, they, everyone was pretty fired up about that game. Uh, again, I'm not a Bulldogs, but, you know, happy for everybody. But, um, but all that to say um, that I think it was just kind of taking the temperature of, of where everything was. And, and we believed it, this was, this was the step we needed to take and just trusting God with, with that. What you is know? your planning process like going into just not, not necessarily this one in particular, but just every conference? Uh, oh yeah. I mean, there's so much planning. Um, and, you know, and honestly that, that, I can tell you from the music standpoint uh, that that's a little more of my, my zone, but I mean, a lot of it is there's great vision from Louie and Shelly uh, to gather people and uh, bring, and to bring people together. And so we have a whole conference team. And so on that side of things, they're working the logistics. How do we move people um, when we're in the, in the bins, all that kind of stuff. And also on that team is like, how do we get people here? And it was really cool. Even this year, like, um, we all kind of had to get scrappy. And so there was a lot of us who leaned in in the last, like since November, we kind of shot out to all these campuses and we went to campus ministries and literally popped up. There's um, a resident, uh, you know, it's, uh, um, she just hustled. She got on like Georgia College and State University, small school, east of Atlanta. Um, she got a group me and we got like hundreds of, of girls on this group me and said, hey, meet me here for lunch. And so they had a little team. I mean, it, it was that grassroots for this one in terms of getting people there. And like there were that night we had a little uh, kind of pop up gathering and there were like 700 students from this small school east of Atlanta. About, it's about an hour and a half east of Atlanta. Um, you know, and a bunch of them started to come. I mean, we did that to FSU, Clemson, Auburn, like kind of Mississippi, like just all over the place there in the last month. So there's that, those pe there's a lot on our conference team that's doing that. And then the music side of things, um, we um, we're kind of always working on music, always writing music. A lot of our songwriters this is just kind of in the rhythm and in the flow. But we have a writing camp in October. And it, there, it was a lot of our team from Passion City Church and then um, some outside friends, people who've been on the journey with us. And Louie and Shelly cast some vision spiritually about, about you know, where they felt God was leading. And one of the things was that um, we're praying for God um, to, to send a generation to the nation. So this every nation, tribe, and tongue. And, um, and, and that God, you know, this, this was big on his heart is really cool all the messages kind of had this thread about it and so um it, it, was, it was really cool so a lot of the songs that we were singing came from that week in october um as we got together to uh to write those songs it's like beautiful jesus the song chitima sings what he's done which i think is one of the greatest gifts uh, to the church from this this record uh it's a song with christian and anna golding and um and tasha cobbs leonard uh, so awesome um in the live version of that from passion i just heard the mix <laughs> i'm driving in my car on my way to get to this podcast so great um shine like stars was another one that was written in that in that week so yeah it's crazy it's just really cool and so then what we do is we take you know uh, we take those songs and then we start to uh, to work on them and we wanted to get a, a few of the songs out before passion so we made a little project kind of real impromptu called live from rehearsals so that those songs and some of these moments could be marinating in people as they're coming to the to this gathering um and then we just kind of through the month of december you know we're just kind of working through the sets and these moments and um you know going from working on songs to what are the moments and now are we just worshiping and leading and um so it's a it's a lot of a process but it was really really strong this year um a little bit uh different direction from the conference last time we talked to melody we asked her like how did she get involved with passion in the first place like and i'm wondering like how did you get how did you get to passion from the beginning yeah. 
Yeah, I, um, I first kind of entered into this world. Um, I used to be a high school kid that snuck into a Bible study that Louis Giglio taught called 722 back in the 2000s. And um, it, I never heard anyone talk about Jesus the way Louis did. And the worship, I had never experienced God in worship like that before. And um, and then I kind of heard about passion through, through that. And uh, so I would come to the conference as a college student. And to be honest, I've grown up in church and I loved God. And, and I mean, I, I was following Jesus, but I never heard the story quite like the way passion was carrying the story that, yes, God loved me. God saved me. I kind of thought like I was at the center of all of this, you know, and, and passion helped me see that actually Jesus is at the center of it all. And yes, he does love me. Yes, he has saved me, but for the purpose of his glory, you know, to, to, you know, like Philippians two, that when every knee would bow and every tongue would say, he is Lord, like that he's at the center of all that. every moment that we see in the throne room of heaven and scripture, he's at the center of it all. We're not, at, we, we're there and we're, we're a part of it. And that's actually what satisfies us is when he is being amplified and glorified and magnified and, and worshiped. And so um, I kind of came in that way and then um, kind of led worship here and there, served in different capacities in ministry. I went to church, uh, sorry, I went to New York city to help plant a church and came back to Atlanta. And then in those early years, me and my wife actually were getting married at the time. Um, this was like 12 or so years ago, Passion City Church was starting. And I was like, man, if this church has the same DNA as this conference that has really impacted my life, I want to be a part of it. And so we were involved and um, helped out in so many, we've helped out in many different ways. And our roles have changed about a hundred times over the last 12 years and, and all of that. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of how we got plugged in and, and kind of those early days, uh, uh, Chris Tomlin sent me an email and said, hey, do you want to, would you want to come and, and be a part of, um, you know, being up there at the conference? I'm pretty sure my microphone wasn't even on that year. And <laughs> then also uh, got invited into the songwriting side of things. And I just fell in love with that and I'm getting to learn from guys like him and Matt Redman and Louie and, and, and Crowder. Um, and so, yeah, just over the years, just continued to just be plugged in and tried to help out wherever, wherever we could. And we've seen God grow an amazing team of people, of worship leaders, of songwriters, of musicians. And um, yeah, it's been a really cool, cool journey. What, what songwriters did you bring in as guests, like when you were doing the, the preliminary writing? Yeah, um, Mia Fields, uh, you know, amazing, legendary. Uh, she wrote on Beautiful Jesus. Patrick um, Avery, um, he wrote on a couple of the songs as well. Jess Kate, um, Kirby was there. Uh, I mean, there's so many. I'm going to miss, I'm going to, if I start listening, I'm going to miss somebody. I'm going to feel really bad. <laughs> but it was a great week. A lot of them are, you know, just kind of songwriters, again, that um, over the years um, have, have, you know, we've all written, I, I've kind of find as a songwriter, some of the best songs are just written out of relationship and friendship. And so, um, you know, it's really cool living in Atlanta. Um, there's, there's already so many great, you know, you know, these guys, like, I mean, Sean, he's part of our church and our community, Sean Curran. Um, you have the whole Mav world is kind of in, in down the street, um, you know, Kirby and house fires, all the, you know, Pat, so in Atlanta, there's just a lot of great, and we're all friends and we've all written a lot of music over the years. And then Nashville is only like a, you know, three and a half, four hour drive. And so uh, it, it, it's really fun. Can you talk a little bit, I'd love to like, maybe kind of put, put yourself in the shoes of like a smaller worship team, younger worship yeah. leader wanting to get into some kind of co-write, some kind of songwriting. Like I love Louis yeah. so intentional. So like he, brought some vision and you guys picked it up and you ran with it and passion's incredible. Like, could you maybe, how would you suggest a worship leader in a small church try to figure out how to do something like that? Oh, I, I love it. It's really simple and it's really the same. Um, I think uh, one, hopefully wherever you are, you know, and you, you might not be, but I, I would, you know, I think one of the ways that we serve as worship leaders is we serve the vision of our, of our pastors and I think, you know, to say, hey, where, where do you sense God leading us? Where are we going? What, what are some themes that you want to, you know, that you believe God, you know, whether it's a, a, a sermon series or um, maybe it's just that this is where we are right now and we need something that helps us verbalize this thing. 
you know, like that uh, of God's faithfulness. You know, maybe we just we need a song that marks our community around God's faithfulness. And then you take that into your creative spaces. And I always tell, you know, younger worship leaders too, you know, you don't always have to like bite off the whole song and just be like, oh, you know, I led King of Kings and then I led this song. <laughs> it's like, <"Whoa."> yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay, great. The greatest song ever written. And you know, my little offering. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. Um, but maybe it's just, maybe it's just a simple, a simple chorus, you know, that you can just kind of insert into the, into the set list one day. And, um, and, 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 and I think that's where, I mean, the great gift is Louie and Shelly really care about worship a lot. And so they, they have a lot of, they, 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 they want our people to be, to be a worshiping people. And so, um, so there is a really good relationship there, but I think you can be proactive in that as a young worship leader is to, to say, okay, you know, maybe you got to ask a few more questions to a leader who maybe not isn't musical or might not be, have that bend. But I think if you're like going, can we serve where you, you, God's given you the mantle of leadership in this community and how can we serve that, that mission and how can we help people express their love and devotion to God and move in this same direction. Cause I think when you, when people are experiencing life change, when you see people coming to know Jesus and being redeemed and restored and their lives are being changed and you're moving in the direction of the community, when you have that kind of a song or that expression, it really is like, you know, you're that you feel that that's when you feel like you're in your momentum and you're not just like, Oh, I got a little song that I've got, you know, like, <laughs> just kind of like out here doing your thing. It's not, it, it's more of like, I'm, I'm trying to use my gift I'm, to serve the greater purpose of, of this community. Yeah. And that's, yeah. you know, and again, if you blow that to, you move that through and that that's in essence, what we're trying to do with, um, with our music and, and to the moment that we're standing in, you know? Yeah. What, uh, what's the Lord been just teaching you lately? What's been on your heart? <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> my, here's my journal hold on let me go get it right right <laughs> you don't have to go that far but yeah like what yeah. what's what's been what's been uh, going on well i mean i i think um over the last few months i mean in this last season i think god's just been simplifying a lot of things for me and that's been really helpful to me um where things that maybe i thought were very important aren't as important and i think just the simplicity of following Jesus, of, of, um, of, as a pastor, as a leader, as a worship leader, song, whatever, you know, like I, I, I am a follower of Jesus and I'm a worshiper of Jesus and, and I'm, you know, and I'm a husband and I'm a dad and, and I just want to be faithful to those things each and every day. Um, I think one of the things he's been teaching me is uh, just the simplicity of the way of Jesus. You know, um, I've been in this season, I've kind of been helping also lead our young adult community. And uh, we walked through the Beatitudes this summer. And I just, I kind of have, it, it's always this picture for me that's, that's it, you know, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And, and, and then he goes on to, to list these ways of the kingdom. And then it kind of culminates in the next paragraph where he says, you are the light of the world. And so our lives, and again, this is, a, for me, it's just, I see this thread happening and maybe it's just God speaking to me, but I just think he's simplifying things for the church. He's simplifying things for me and for us that, and he's saying, because you're with me, because you belong to me, you're different than the rest of the world. And your value system is different than the rest of the world. And the way that you process things are different than the rest of the world. And he's given us the, the, the grid of his word and he's given us the power of the Holy Spirit. And he's given us the mission to carry the message of resurrection to everywhere we go. And to be what we talked about, a passion, to be to have the nations in view. And so, um, I don't know, it just, but I think for me, I'm just going, I just said, God, how can I be a light? How can I be a light today? How can I shine for you? How can I, um, how can I represent you? Uh, to the circles that I might be in today. And I think it's just that daily, that daily framework is what God's teaching me. And um, it's been helpful. Great. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk about um, the song that you're featured on, Shine Like Stars? Like, yeah. 
did you were you part of the the writing of yeah. that or you know how did how did it get to the point where you were featured on it versus you know one of the other singers and you know how did that come to be yeah crazy you know so because Crazy, the journey, I love the journey. Songwriting is like my favorite thing. And I just, I love the journey. All the songs are different. Some are like, oh, this is like a million years to write. Um, and some just kind of, uh, just kind of flow. And right before that writing camp, I was just, I, w- I honestly had been so much in our young adult space of trying to figure out how do we launch a semester and get people going and uh, you know, all of that. And I was like, oh, I just don't feel like I have any great ideas uh, coming into the camp. And I just had a few, I just sat down like a couple of days before and just kind of the, a few little chorusy things kind of popped out. And this chorus was one of those, those ideas. And so I showed it to one of the groups that I kind of got with and, um, Ricky and Patrick and Jess, and it just clicked. And we, again, Louis had given us that vision of Isaiah 6 and uh, some some of these verses in Revelation of people being around the throne of God. And um, I, I've always loved, you know, we, we need, as a worship leader, I'm hungry for sending songs. Like we don't have tons of those. We have a lot of God, come and do this, come and do this, come and move, come and move, which is awesome. And we want God to do that. But in the diet of songs, like we don't have any songs that say, Lord, we're going, you know, send me, here am I, send me. And so I, f- I knew that this chorus, I kind of had had that. And and so as I feels like a passion, we're going to need that song. And so kind of threw that idea out and then all, everything just kind of began to flow. I love the, you know, the beginning lines and my uh, my eyes have seen the King of glory, right? That's like Isaiah six. Like I've seen Jesus, I've been changed by him and, um, and I didn't know, I mean, I, we just, I didn't, we just kind of put the song together that day. And then it just as, as our team began to process that one kind of was like, I think this one's going to help us say what we want to say as a community, as a movement in this moment, you know, is a generation. And, and it's really cool. I got to, I just heard the live mix um, yesterday for the first time and to hear over 50,000 people singing this. I mean, there's a moment where everybody cuts out and you can just hear the people. And it, you just, it, for me, it just takes me back to hear that roar of, um, of all these college students saying, you know, and, and I don't think that message of going to the nations, I've done a lot of student ministry over the last 10 years. And I don't think this wave of students have heard that message a ton, you know? And um, I, I, I just think there, I, again, I was just in this team meeting um where we were sharing these stories. And I know of two industrial engineer uh, students who felt like God might call them into ministry, but they wanted to do some engineering to earn a little money, you know, beforehand. And, um, but at passion, God moved in their life and was saying, no, we've got to go now. We've got to go now. We've got to take the, the gospel uh, to people. And, and I love that, that that's what God does in these moments. And um, so, yeah, that, that was that song. So we kind of, that one was one on those uh, live from rehearsal. And so we kind of got that one out a little bit before passion. So it was really cool that I think that was stirring. And, and then as we were in the conference, that song just served as a little thread um, through, through these, these moments. And um, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool uh, to, to, to hear people go, I'm going to shine bright for Jesus. You mentioned that that was like a thread in the conference. I'd love to hear, like, do you guys, are you guys pivoting as conference goes and kind of changing set lists as, like, talk a little bit about how, once you're in the thick of it, how much riffing do you guys do really? Yeah. um, Yes. Yes. (laughs) The answer is yes. It's a lot of planning and, um, and it's a lot of flexibility. So, I mean, it's really planned. Uh, we, we do a lot just on the front end, just because, and honestly, to do something in the Mercedes, I mean, you know, even just practically speaking, where we were standing singing, we were 50 yards from the band. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of, it's, but we did flow, you know? And so I think it's kind of one of those things of, um, I, I've heard Louis say this a lot of my leadership life. Um, when you're the most, when you're as prepared as you can be, you can be very flexible. And so we try and embrace that mentality of do a yeah. lot on the front end. And um, so, yeah, that would be kind of our, our, our mantra. That's great. What's your biggest fail personally from like any of the conferences <laughs> in the past? Wow. Like, uh, like has, has, have you had any moments, like <laughs> anything happened to you? Like, 
I don't know, falling off the stage, you know, mess up words, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, definitely. I mean, I think my, the funniest one is, uh, um, back in, uh, is it 2016 we were in south africa in that like soccer stadium <laughs> that like you know the world cup or whatever was played in and um and we were it was in the era of like god's great dance floor and um and we were jumping around and i like jumped on the drum set to like and i like slipped and i almost took out brian our guitar player and then i kept taking a couple other steps and then eventually like right in the middle of the stage it just basically fell on my butt like right there and um and so it's just you know you know it's it's you know it's great no one no i promise you no one saw it <laughs> oh look you know it's funny though is louis did louis was on the side stage and his mouth was just like like ah he just <laughs> opened his mouth wide. he was like you silly guy yeah <laughs> for this this current conference was there anything like right at the last minute that you had to like throw an audible like something big happened that you had to change um a big audible i don't i don't think so not in this one i think um it was really cool we've never done this before on the front end um we got together with all the a lot of the uh, worship leaders and the um in this uh preachers the communicators and um and we prayed it was just like really for 24 hours and we just prayed and i i just there's that and we got on a zoom a little bit before that and so i think some of those touch points i think we all kind of came in with a very singular focus on what we were there to do and so i don't i didn't feel i mean we were very flexible and things definitely shifted but there was no big like oh no we got to do this now i think everyone kind of was like nope we know what our assignment is and we're we're here to do what god called us to do mm. Uh, like a technical question for like as a worship leader, I mean, a lot of people don't get the opportunity to lead worship in front of 50,000 people. Um, yeah. Like, how do you keep both your in ears in? Do you ever pull it out to hear? Like, do you ever get like wrapped up and like, you know, and then as far as like staying in time and staying with the song, like, is it a struggle trying to like balance that? In a stadium, 1000%, do not pull your ears out. Because <laughs> if you just think about it, like, I'm like, we're our little stage. If you ever saw like any of the videos, like this, where the singers were, we were in, literally like on the 50 yard line, like on like a, a extension. And the band was like where the end zone was. And the, that's where the PA was. So we're actually in front of the PA. <laughs> so if you could Jeez. imagine like the <laughs> snare drums hitting, you know, and then it's going going through the PA and then coming. So no, you can't, you can't take your, your in-ears out. Um, but I like to have a lot of the, I'm weird. I like to have a lot of the crowd. Um, so, but you gotta be a little, it's in a stadium, you gotta be a little um, conservative about that because you might, <laughs> you'd be like, whoa, where's the time, you know, or just get a lot of click in a, in a situation like that, just cause you know, um, it is what it is. But honestly, this year, um, I, I think too, if it, the more you can, you know, when, the more you can settle in and just be like, okay, we're just leading people and we want to be as present as we can in the moment with Jesus and the moment with the people and where we are and what God's been doing. I loved it. Um, there was a moment in um, Jenny Allen led a moment where we got to uh, confess our sins to each other. That you know, brings healing. And um, it was a really tender moment where it was, it was it was really well done for like a group of 50,000 people you know and uh it was kind of like turn to a couple neighbors and say hey here's here's the thing that god's asking me to confess to you right now um and while that was happening the the there was windows in the top of the mercedes benz and light was just pouring like it was the time of day light was pouring and it was so crazy it's like the literal of what God was doing in our hearts, you know, of like bringing things out of the darkness and into the light, like that was happening. And Brooke was, um, was leading worship and she had like a whole set, right. But she really stepped into the tenderness of that moment and, um, and just was really present to it. And so I, I think that's kind of the, the key as worship leaders and that, you know, just on a real practical level, that's why we don't like, want to hang out in the green room while the talk's going on and watching YouTube videos with our buddies <laughs> because like you totally are missing what God is up to in yeah. the room and in people and in you 
and you don't want to miss out on that. And so, so I think the more present we, we can be to the moment, to people and to the Lord, I think the better leaders we can be. And so even in, even in an environment like that, that's like really, you know, kind of a, it's a, there's a big thing happening. There's a lot happening and there's a lot of moving parts. I think we can, we can be really present to, to what God wants us to do and how he wants us to lead and to navigate. Hmm. Wonderful. I was logging in, you know, on and off. Uh, I actually had COVID that the exact time you had the conference. So like, that was like my entertainment. (laughs) What, when I could open my eyes and I, I remember logging in to one of the later sessions and people were like holding up, things they had written on either a paper or something. Do you remember that? Um, yes. That was like at the very, very end. They were yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. here am I, send me. Yeah, it was yeah, that yeah. Was that moment. Yeah. I, so I got, I got this, the, the second half of that. So I'm curious, like, what, what was, like, how did that start? And what, you know, what was that about? Yeah, that was uh, Christine Kane had just done her message. It was the last message of the conference. And, Um, she was basically saying, Hey, you know, I believe her message, um, was talking about, uh, this, the spies going in, you know, two came back and said, we can do it. We can take hold of what God wants us to. And, uh, and, and eight said, no, hopefully my numbers are right. Um, but basically it's like one in one in no 12. So there were 12 spies total. Yeah. So two and then 10 and, and, uh, one six of, you can be around and see the promise and not take hold of it and not step into it. And so out of that message, we sang shine like stars and we sang that song of saying, Lord, I do want to step into it. Here am I, send me. And then um, Brad Jones, uh, our, one of our pastors and Christine came up and led that moment of people saying, here's where God is sending me. And, and to say real specifically, you know, whether it is a nation or whether it's um, my campus or whether it's my family or my workplace, uh, Lord, wherever you want, this is where I'm going. Hey, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the podcast. We are so glad that you took the time to listen. Make sure to find us on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook. There's always something going on. You can always go to thechurchcollective.com. It's been a little while since we've had some conferences. So if you're looking for those, we have some stuff in the works for this year. Can't wait to see you guys.